everyone. So today what have we been doing? Well, I've got another chat with a mate for you. Today this is Joe Batsford, a mate of mine for ooh, 18 years. That shows that you're getting older when that number keeps on increasing. Um, <laughs> so today we talk to Joe, we talk through a lot of different subjects from YouTube, from monetization, from mental health, from um, uh, uh, relationships to, uh, do you know what, loads of stuff. There is swearing, a lot from me, even more from Joe. Stop it, Joe. Um, and we hope you enjoy. This is an hour and 13 minutes long. Uh, see who stays in there. Let us know exactly what you think. And uh, yeah, well, I hope you enjoy, folks. So this is the chat with my mate, Joe Batsford. Oh, God, what were we talking about? Home automation. You said yeah. you wanted to get some plugs and get everything sorted out. Yeah, um, it, um, it, that's, that whole thing started with um, one of my friends from... Um, from primary school, like known him for, since he was this big. Yeah. Um, he, he took his family away, and his parents decorated his son's room um, for him as, as a birthday present. Oh yeah. And that's all home, home automated because because um, he's divorced from his original from um, his son's mother. Yeah. It, it just doesn't have a place to to stay really, so he converted the attic room and the decked it out with Google Home um, nice. Google Minis and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, so he's up there, he's got a pool table and he's got lights that, and he just goes, OK, Google, turn on Minecraft. Yeah. And he's got a big sort of like neon creeper sign above his bed. <laughs> OK, Google, turn on TV. Done. Yeah. I'm just like, that is so cool. <laughs> right. Now, how can I employ this awesomeness and yet still be super lazy. <laughs> well that's it, I mean for the minute the setup downstairs is really basic. One Google Home Mini, yeah. three um, Wi-Fi um, plugs, another one yeah. here. Essentially, eventually I'm going to get a Raspberry Pi that runs a dashboard Yeah. that I can then see. I'm going to have a Amazon Fire tablet in the living room, yeah. one in the kitchen, one up here, one in the bedroom. Yeah. And it's all going to be running the same monitors. dashboard. Yeah. yeah, so you can just walk in, even if you don't want to say, OK, Google, turn on uh, light or whatever, yeah. or turn on shower or something like that. Yeah. You can just click a button and you can do it That's yourself it. Yeah. without having to touch the actual sockets. Yeah. I know it sounds very lazy, but getting into this sort of mindset where you actually have a voice command to do something yeah. is certainly somewhere I want to be. Because yeah. ever since I was a kid and I watched Star Trek, Yep, totally. And, yeah, you, you get what I'm Earl saying? Grey, hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, they, they have got eye kettles, or, you know, white yeah, yeah. kettles. But that, that, to me, still seems a little bit dangerous. Yeah. A mate of mine has his cooker plugged in on, on home automation um, and just literally turn, walks in and goes, OK, Google, turn on living room light, kitchen light, back light, um, open whatever, turn on the oven. Yeah. And literally everything just gets working. That, so as yeah. he's taken off his jacket, everything's heating up. Yeah. You know, so he, then he, he he gets changed, walks in the in the kitchen, opens up his his, his oven, whacks the food in. That, everything is you know, and that's yeah. I think, I know it sounds silly, but when you're working full time and you've got a load of other commitments as exactly. well, having that things that so can shape yeah. exactly. It's like running. It's like writing a little bash script on Linux. Yeah. Having something that takes out five seconds of your time. If you do that every single day for a week, those touches can add up. Exactly, yes. And that's exactly where I want to be, get to a stage where everything's automated. You know, I mean, yesterday I brought home the Google Mini and I said to Hannah about it and Hannah, I'd be honest, didn't really seem very intrigued. She was like, yeah. oh, it just tells you about the weather and that's it. So I did the plugs and yeah. didn't tell her about it. And then as it got dark last night, I just said, okay, Google, turn on the living room light. And it came on and she just looked at me. And she was what like, is this wizardry? What, what? And then when I said, okay, now, okay, Google, let's watch so and so on Netflix, and it just changed the, changed the channel, bumped, there we are, we're now watching this. She sat there and she was like, what, what is this? <laughs> and, and now we're buying, yeah. we're buying a big Google Home yeah, for yeah. the speaker. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I say, when she goes, can you play music? And I said, ask it. And she asked it, can you play this? And then they started playing some of her electronica. She was like, but it sounds so tinny. I was like, you can get a big one. 
Yeah. So we're going to get the big home for downstairs in the living yeah. room, and then we're going to get the mini one for in here, one for in the bedroom, one for in her room, yeah, one yeah. for in the kitchen. Because when I said, oh, she goes, how, how can this help me? And I said about the recipes. Yeah. Okay, Google, have you got a recipe for chili con carne? Yeah. And it went, yes, in fact, I have. Get a pen. And Anna was like, oh, my God, i got to get a pen. And, uh, <laughs> and then yeah. it turned out, and it was like, put in this, put in this, you know, then mix this together, ding, 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 and, ding, you know, ding, let yeah. it simmer for 20 minutes, boom, done. She was like... This is just brilliant. Yeah. You know, and it, and it does. It sounds silly. If I try and talk to somebody and tell them what that is, yeah. it sounds absurd. It sounds, it, it doesn't sound interesting. It sounds, you know, absolutely insane. Yes, but the people who actually like that stuff, it's a, it's, it's yeah. epoch making. It's, it, yeah. it, it, it's world changing. It is, absolutely. It is, absolutely. But it, again, so we, we're now upgrading that. So, when Hannah saw the light go on last night, I was on Amazon Prime, yeah. same day in those yeah. for today, you know, or sorry, yeah. next day for those for today. Yeah. So I've, I've got to set those up. So as you saw downstairs, turn on the amplifier, boom, amplifier comes on, yeah. you know, and that sounds silly, but as it's on the bottom shelf, yeah. we always forget to turn it on. Yeah. So we get our food, we sit down or whatever, we get everything ready and then it's like play and oh, I yeah. almost, oh God damn it, the amp is off. Yeah. Okay, Google, we'll, we'll turn on the amplifier. Boom, ding. There we are. And lovely. Dings. Carry on eating our food yeah. now. Great. Yeah. And that's exactly, you know, it sounds so lazy, but we're in the 21st century. God damn it, we don't have flying cars or no. hoverboards. <laughs> I'm going to sod him well. Bastards. I, <laughs> I'm going to sod him well, talk into a piece of into a piece of kit that turns on my lights. Yeah. It's going to totally. happen. Totally. You know, <laughs> you know and, I, I, and I think that, that that's it. And the more home automation that comes out and the more people that, that actually adopt, uh, adopt it, that's it, yeah. you know, the better it's going to get. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that's, that used to be, oh, what was that Absurd. horrible phrase I hate, emergent technology. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was right, yeah that, was, yeah, that wasn't nice was it? No, and I'm just like, no it's, it's not emergent, it's something that we've been promised before years yeah. and yeah. now it's come about and now we're actually sort of getting to use it god damn it we're going to make use of it yeah exactly my parents are very my mother is very skeptical about it but um i recently learned when i went to my next door neighbors to fix her ipad mm. um she'd been given a new ipad for her birthday and so she was donating her old ipads to her uh, husband's granddaughter yeah um, so I was swapping all the data over. She's got a Google Home Mini and a proper Google Home as well. Yeah. And she was ranting and raving about this. this, this she loved it. Yeah. And she's been singing his praises to mum. And mum's just like, so you know this thing you're planning on doing in your bedroom? Yeah. Explain it to me one more time so I can try not to be so middle-aged <laughs> about it. Once I think people see it working, and once there's a real-world application, Mm. I think people adopt it a lot easier and a lot quicker. When you say to people, oh, there's, you know, it's a little bit of plastic that's tied into the internet that you ask it questions, people automatically think, oh, hang on, is it going to listen to me when it when I don't yes. say it? Is it going to be recording conversations? It's, it, it's, it's the same thing with, with having a smartphone. Yeah. There were loads of people I knew when they had a candy bar phone, they would, if they would sit down to have yeah. a serious chat, they would take the battery out. Yeah. You know, but now a lot of my friends that still have candy bars still do that. Yeah. You know, oh, because everyone's listening. Right. Okay. Let's mm. let's let's boil it down. They probably are. Yeah. They don't care. No. If they did, they'd dick you. Yeah. <laughs> you could. Yeah, yeah. Or they'd seize your bank accounts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. something like that. There are so many ways in which that you know they can they can censor you and all the rest. Yeah, of course, it. of course there is. And the thing is, everybody knows that there is a way that you can get censored. Yeah. So, I don't know if you just saw Google I.O. Did you watch that? No, I didn't. Right. There's a part of this. Now, I've always been sceptical about Google having too much too much information and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, So, if, say, I'm on Android and it says, do you want to send damage reports? I'll always yeah. click no. No, absolutely. Because of the very first report that ever came out years ago that sent person's bank details onto Exxon, onto, onto whichever company it was. Yeah. And ever since then, I've had it in the back of my mind, no, I don't want to send that, you know. No. If, if there's a bug report, I'll log on, I'll, I'll go onto the app, manually. and I'll do it manually myself. Yeah, that, that, totally. That's fine. Yeah. Um, now, where was I going with this? Yes, Google I.O. Yeah. They've just had it. If you haven't seen it, give it a, give it a watch. About halfway through, 
they are they are demonstrating this is what made me go for the Google Google Home Mini. Yeah. Because I've never liked Alexa. Yeah. I don't really like Amazon. I do buy things from Amazon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I hate Jeff Bezos. Um so only because he's got more money than me. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> The same could be said for a lot of people. Yeah, but, but Jeff, still. Yeah, he just looks like a person you want to hate. So, um, yeah, no, I'll give you that. That's fine. Um, and Google Demonstrate in this, uh, a, a Google Assistant, which is obviously the the, the, the bare bones of a Google now, yeah. Google Home, rather. Yeah. Um, how to... They demonstrate the Assistant making a phone call because in uh, Android P, yeah. there's going to be a phone call. Uh, yeah. Sorry, there's going to be... Uh, something added where you can say make a reservation as you normally would as you say yeah. to the Google Assistant make a reservation in my calendar for wherever yeah. now what Google Assistant does now yeah. when it when it comes out is it places a phone call to that restaurant right. and talks to the person at the other end of the line and says hiya uh, based on the information you give it obviously you've got to give it a proper string so something yeah. like make a rest make a restaurant uh, make a reservation in this restaurant for this many people this day at this time yeah you know so it has all the variables it and it can just it exactly it can just go yeah, ahead it can just run off a script yeah exactly so it, it rings up but what the impressive thing was it wasn't just that it rung up oh yeah. very yeah great yeah. you make That's a VoIP connection no problem at all yeah cracking what was what was in, what was mind blowing for me was the fact that halfway through the conversation, when this this person in the right restaurant turned around and said, "Oh, we can't do that day. We can do this day," the assistant went, "Oh, right. Um, yeah, okay. Do you know what? I'm going to double check, and I'll get back to you." Sort yeah. sort of thing, you know. Yeah. But it actually went, "Oh, I mean, I thought about it, yeah. even though there's probably just a sleep delay, you know." Yeah, yeah, but yeah. again, it just thought about it. It was like for yeah. a second, "All oh, right, hang on. Yeah, do you know what?" Yeah, all right. And it thought about what was being asked. Yeah. It didn't just say, sorry, I don't understand, please, you know, please. Yeah. It's proper artificial intelligence. It is you know, machine learning. Yeah. And if you get a chance to watch it, give it a shot. That's it's really interesting. It's interesting. amazing. And they place two calls. One call that goes a perfect, you know, perfectly fine. And the second call doesn't go fine because there's a language barrier. Um, there is, um, you can't have that restaurant on this time of this day. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, that's not the thing. You can have the restaurant at this time, this day, but you you can just walk in. You yeah. don't have to make a reservation. Yeah. But obviously, in the calendar, you were told to make a reservation for this restaurant. Yeah. And at the end, the Google Assistant goes, oh, right, okay, I get it, no problem. Yeah, we'll just walk in, no problem. And then it'll make a note of that in your calendar so that you just go look at it and go, oh, I, I don't have to book, I've just got to walk in. Oh, see, so you now that's... You smart. know... <laughs> I was watching that, and me and a couple of guys who work were watching that, and we were sitting down going, oh, this is going to, this is, because this isn't going to work, this is going to no. crash and burn. And as soon as, um, as soon as they played it, I sat there, my jaw hit the floor. A couple of guys behind me went, what the absolute hell? Yeah. And it was just amazing. It was just, start, you know, start to finish, it worked. The demo was perfect. The phone call was excellent. They placed a the phone call there, and then, you know, it was just excellent. Oh, Start to finish, it. absolutely, you know, really, really good. I, I shall have to look into that. Yeah, um, I think it's still, I think the back end of it is still running on Hangouts. Yeah. I think, I think that's ex essentially what it's based on now, I believe. Yeah. But, yeah, have a little look. So since I saw that, and since I saw the level of machine learning, I it's thought, you know what, I, yeah, I don't no, care. Just... Google, you can have it all. Yeah. Because you're Crack doing off. something with it, which is constructive and which can help people. Yeah, and totally. It, I think, I may be wrong with this, but I believe the assistant can make up to five phone calls at a time. I think. Yeah. I may be wrong with that. I may have, See, it, that maybe it, it's a maximum of five. I, I don't know. But watch it. Yeah. About halfway through, it's excellent. Absolutely excellent. Yeah. I well look into that. well worth you watching it. That is the next level. That is the next level. I'm sorry, but you know, it gets to a stage where yeah. you can just tell Google Assistant... I want to do this, and then it goes off and does it. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> Go and on. it gets back to you, and you're like, oh, man. because you think, if you make in, say, five phone calls a day for doctors, vets, appointments, reservations, and things like this, yeah. you get to a stage, you know yourself, not every phone call goes through according to plan. No, absolutely. So you're, you're talking to begin with, the first phone call may go, fine, three yeah. minutes. Next one may be ten minutes. Yeah. Next one may be four minutes. Next, You know, so at the end of the yeah. day, you've wasted your lunch hour. Yeah. Whereas if you've got something, 
an artificial intelligence life form doing that for yeah. you. Hey, do you know what? Yeah. I can eat my pasty in peace. Yeah. You know, and that's and and that's perfect. That's, uh, it's, it's it's crazy the amount of time little annoying little annoyances like that can take out of your day. Yeah. I mean when was it? Back in March, um, my car insurance came through and they put the price up again. I was just like, yeah, no, not happening. This, this, this time I actually have led because the last time, the last time uh, my insurance came through. Um, you want to get yourself a cheap car like a Corsa? Funny you should mention that. <laughs> I have one. Um, but yeah, the last time the insurance re renewals re renewal notices came through, um, me and my ex had just broken up. Oh yeah, um, sometimes. The best. Um, and she said, right, there's letters for you here, come and pick them up. Okay, fine, grand job. Insurance renewal for February. It <laughs> could have been a nice letter, you've won a grand. <laughs> Right, fine, ring them up because the price was absolutely ludicrous and it had gone up. Oh, right, okay, well, you know, you, you're still within the, the, the cool down period or whatever. Bull hockey, they say. Um, fine, so. What was that? Bull hockey? Yes. Nice, like it. Okay. <laughs> it's when I'm trying to just wear and be polite. Okay, fine. Um, but yeah, um, as I said, yeah, well, you've changed the rest, so that instantly knocks X amount off. You've um, changed jobs. Um, so that knocks £300 off. Yeah. So I've gone from being a car park attendant to working at a call centre. Nice. 300 quid gone instantly. How did they do that then? What, what was it like? No, just because just, a car parking attendant is presumably a higher risk job because... Well, yeah, of you getting knifed, not of your car getting nicked. No, but if they work out that that's your car and you've just booked them, they're likely <laughs> to give it a kick in. Alright, okay, yeah, I didn't yeah. think of that. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, that, cool. that, at least that's what I assume. <laughs> I like that. Someone slashed your tyres. Yeah. That's an extra 500 quid. What? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so sorted all that, all that out and then they sent me a letter saying, Hi, yeah, we're putting your insurance up by another 100 quid. I was just like, yeah, no, not happening. Um, so I was sat in work on my lunch break watching the minutes tick by trying to get my insurance switched over I'm just like I don't wish to be rude I'm, I'm due back to work in like three minutes can we speed it up some um, yeah no computer's crashed so, so you mean I've got to ring back when I finish work sort of half an hour before your call centre closes God, an assistant can do that for you maybe uh, I don't know about car yeah. insurance but yeah. <laughs> depends if you need to the <laughs> Personal information in your contacts. If you have like your credit card details and stuff like that, perhaps it, 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 it yeah. can do. I can do that too. Yeah, that that would save you time yeah. and save you the stress of talking to somebody. Yeah, another call, another call centre agent who does want to speak to people. Like you, like me. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, soulless devils of the corporate world. Everyone needs a mate. Yeah. <laughs> Every, it doesn't matter what job you have. At yeah. some point, everyone is either going to love you or hate you, you know, because of decisions you're going to make or because of yeah. the people you talk to. Uh, in all fairness, a lot of the people I talk to are, will rant and rave and call me the worst things under the sun. Yes, you know, there's no need of that. There isn't, but I know, I know they're frustrated, so I don't, I don't take it personally. Yeah. And they, and at the, the, the end of the call, they will say, "Look, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have." Gone off on you the way I did. I know it's not you personally. I know you're only doing a job, but the fact that you know the the fact that the people you're working for have screwed me over so badly. Yeah. I just wanted another human person to know what I've been through with this company. And if you can help one other person by knowing what I know about them, then all to the good. Mm. I was just like, fair enough. Sorry, we disappointed you. You know that we couldn't do things prop the way you expected it. Your membership is now closed. You won't receive any phone calls for us in the future. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bloody blah. We'll crack on. Um, but it's the stuff that people tell you is scary. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I imagine. How would how would you how would the call centres work now? What with it being <sighs> the the hang on, don't give anything away. I know you know where I'm going with this. I know exactly. Hang where on. You're going. I got where where how where do I find and with all of this technology? Where the hell do I find the date? Hang on. 
there we go. Let me just try and act as if I now know the date. So, with it being the 26th of May, what... Oh crap, and I've forgotten the question. GDPR! Yep. How does that work with call centres now? Um... It's it. There we are. difficulty. Let's dive straight into the nitty gritty. GDPR. Yes. Um, it's it's just, it's one of those things. It's um because of obviously the the whole sort of implications of every of, the, of all the changes. Everyone. The first question. Everyone was just like, "Well, this is nonsense. It's not going to affect us in X Y Z period of time after Brexit." Yes, it will because it's it's essentially the way that. Britain interacts with the wider world and internally so this is a, a, a structure that's going throughout Europe and throughout the world and it's going to be the way that we, no matter what happens after Brexit, it's the way we interact and relay data so it, it's, it's, it's coming and it's stuck no matter what um, it's definitely confusing um, but basically the way it affects me is I have to confirm um, treble the amount of data protection. Oh yeah. Um, before I can actually sort of divulge any information, um, which a lot of people are very aggressive. No, not happy about. Okay. Um, so Stick with aggressive. Of, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a case of I just go right. Okay. So um, calling you about such and such a thing. Uh, the reason for the call is blah de blah. Um, before I go into any further details about it, do you mind if I ask you a couple of data protection questions, um, just so I can explain what, what's going on properly? Um, can you confirm um, your the first time you come address your postcode and your date of birth? Yeah. Well, no. I was just saying, okay, was there a particular reason you didn't want to confirm that? Well, you already have that. Why do you need that information from me? If you're if you're calling from the union. You already have that. Yeah. Or if you're calling from wherever, you already have that information. Yeah. You, you're speaking to me, you know my name. It's just like, right, well, it's because of the GDPR, we have to confirm data protection to make sure that we are speaking to the right person, so we're giving out the right information. And if any action is required on your account, we have to make sure that by closing the right account or we're reinstating the right account, because otherwise it could uh, it let, lead to all sorts of trouble. I could lose my job, I could be fined up to £25,000. The company I work for could be fined up to 4% of its gross annual um, profit. There's huge implications involved. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I don't care about that. No, I'm not telling you anything, Trap. Done. And so we just block the number and just, that's that, move on to the next one. Lots of people are really fine with it, though. Mm. It's, it, it's, it's, there's only one or two, one or two people who are really sort of stringent about it and I was just like, oh no, I never confirm details over the phone. And I was just like, okay, fine, whatever. And then it's just a case of the ones who are happy to confirm it, to confirm it, and you do your speech, you say what you got to say, if they want to do something about it, they do it, if they don't, they don't, then we close everything down, and that's that. I mean, I know that my dad's had a really hard time with uh, the rules and regs with church because they've got to have a data protection policy and structure in place with them but because they're a registered charity it's completely different to a company okay so he's had a really hard time with it um but one of the girls in church has been doing it with her boss for her job yeah um and so she got caught with all this paperwork on her desk that wasn't related to what she was working on what's that really sorry I know I shouldn't be working on it but this is stuff for uh, my church with the new GDPR oh right is it a charity yeah well see I've been really I've been really intrigued to look into this so her boss sat down with her for the rest of that afternoon and they basically took what my dad had done and gone right this is good this is good this is good. yep good um, but you can add all this stuff in here I just got so much more expansive. Yeah. And she's got, at the end of the day, when they were going home, the boss actually thanked <laughs> this girl for sort of bringing that to her attention and saying, yeah. that was really fun. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. My God. I thought, oh, you Jerry <laughs> but, yeah. but it's it's one of those things that we've been trained up on and it's just a case of now we just got to work out how to 
how to stick to it and how to not get financially screwed over if we make a mistake. Yeah, I can see it being the end of a lot of businesses. This is it. I mean, listening to the radio on Friday, um, driving to ask us to get food. Um, in a case of feeding that corporate machine. Yeah. Good man. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> the same reason as I give. <laughs> Why you go to Tesco's? Use local businesses. Tesco's is there. Local businesses are four miles that way. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I can walk there and back in about half an hour and, and buy my food and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but it's a case of driving there and there was a guy on the radio, um, small business owner and it's completely flummoxed him. He doesn't know what he's going to do. Um, he's had a hundred emails from, all about GDPR from various um, businesses and creditors and all the rest of it that he interacts with, expecting him to put stuff into place so their data is safe, which is a perfectly fair mm. thing to expect. But he's a butcher. He doesn't know the first thing about data protection. He's never had to deal with it in his life. Yeah. Um, and he's just sat down on, do you know what, blow this for all the soldiers, I'm done, drop, he shut down, down his business and he's retired simply because wow, of PDPR. Wow, good God. Jesus. It's crazy. It's just, that's just the way, it, some people will take it and sort of, will, will take it on the chin and say, right, okay, we'll change this in, in light of the fact, um, like when my dad was church, they, yes, we have a data protection structure in place, if it's not correct, Fair enough. We, we apologise. We did the best we could with the information available at the time. Um, the bit I really found funny was on um, from about one o'clock in the mo on Friday morning, as it rolled over from Thursday into Friday, um, the ICO officer's website went down and no one could access any information. <laughs> that buckled me. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, I imagine there's going to be yeah they're going to be worked into the ground. Is it? Um, Probably. Yeah, you just thought. Um, my boss um, is going away for the weekend, and um, the guy he's staying with, um, partner of their friend, who, who, who's perhaps listening in, um, builds bespoke databases. Okay. And he's ha he's getting approximately 300 emails a day from clients saying, What's all this about GDPR? What do I need to do? How do I change it? What's going on? Help! Yeah. And he's just got, he's just pulling his hair out. And uh, he's just so um, I I fully expect when I go back to work on Tuesday to uh, to see my boss sat behind his desk, glum, drinking his coffee and saying, "So how was this auction about? Uh, how how was your conversation about GDPR with this guy then? Don't go there, bats! Don't go there." Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know what it's like for a, a small business owner, but I've, I've had to when it comes to YouTube because I on my other channel I, I, there's there are competitions. Yeah. So I've just I've just thought of the thing of well I've just removed all emails to do with people's addresses and stuff like that. Yeah. Normally I you know I wouldn't think too much about it, but yeah I just got rid of them. Yeah. Just yeah delete them all. Right. Get rid of it all that way. Then if I need to do it, I'm going to be putting out a small video on there just to talk about it. Yeah, um, but because it's, 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 there's a competition every couple of weeks or something like that, yeah. You know? So it's it's it's. I, I was thinking about it and I was like, well, what do I do? I don't know what to do, you know. So I just thought the simplest thing was just to get rid of all the details. Yeah, and that's delete them all. You know, everything. Make sure they're all gone, and then if I need to get in contact with the guys again, drop them another message like I did the first time using yeah. using YouTube's built-in messenger, and go from there. Yeah. I I think that is the the that's safest. The, that's the safest way. Um, what I would see the way I would go about it is say right and um, anyone who's entering leave a comment but also send an email to a specific email address um, with your um, YouTube username and um, just sort of a, a cop just leave a copy paste statement in the description saying I authorize you to have my to keep my address on file for any future correspondence. And okay. then that way you've got written permission from them, digital via digital media, and so that way you can get you can then get in touch with them, and say right, just letting you know, competition has gone live, blah blah blah. Ooh, that's good. I never thought about doing that. That's very good. I need to talk to you more about this off air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Perfect. 
Um, yeah, I mean it's something that obviously the place I work has been getting ready to to sort out ever since we heard about it, whenever that was, a year ago, yeah. two years ago, whatever it was, when the drop rate was happening, yeah, yeah, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, it's, it's just it's just crazy. It's absolutely mental. But anyway, GDPR aside, nobody wants yeah. to talk. Nobody wants to hear about GDPR. Do you want to hear about GDPR? Nobody's answered. Okay, fine. Tough. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so we've got to sort you out with a quadcopter, fella. Yes. We have got to sort you out. I've been saying this too for ages about getting a quadcopter. And every time I've come up, I've gone away, and I'm just like, "Fuck you!" He said he was going to get a quadcopter. <laughs> I and always forget. It's like literally as I'm going oh. across the Seven Bridge, I'm just like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to sort you one out. We're going to get you a quadcopter. We're going to get you up in the air. We're going to get you... Actually, rather than me dictating to you, what would you prefer? A car or a, co- or a quadcopter? Quadcopter. Quadcopter, good man. Um, what about a boat? There is a pond right at the back of the office. <laughs> Where's that? Uh, Slant Yeah. Oh, uh, another one. Yeah. Well, you can have the boat as well then, because I, Let. I tried to, pff, I tried to use that about a year ago. Yeah. I think it was, but everything. Whenever anybody talks to me, it was always about a year ago. I think. Yeah. Um, it's a reasonably appropriate length of time. I think it is, and I took the boat out to a river. Well, it's yeah. more like a stream. Well, yeah. it's it's more like an, an afterthought. Um, and I tried to use that, and I made a five-minute video up. How the hell I managed that, I'll never know. And I think three minutes of it is me just trying to turn. Yeah. And in the end, I said to the, I said to the camera, "This isn't a review, folks. This is just me having a bit of a laugh with it with a boat." Yeah. I couldn't make it into a review. So yeah, okay, you can have the boat then. Cool. You can have the boat. Take that with you. It's fast. Yeah. It's fast. Okay. Yeah, it's fast. Um, but it's got good transmission range, so as long as you can turn it around, you can get it back to yourself. Scare the ducks. Uh, mind the ducks. Mm. Don't be scaring ducks. Uh, otherwise, no. I'm not going to give you a boat. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, God forbid, I scare the ducks. That one of the girls in work is Mother Hen. Literally, she will go down, she will feed them every morning when she comes in. Um, there's been, I think there's been some new chicks lately, so she's over the moon with that. And so she's been going down every day to make sure they're all alright and all the rest of it. But the second you start to talk, you know, you scare the ducks or the, they start coming at you, it's just a run back into the office. Jax, your children are playing up again! <laughs> but, but it's not that, it's, it, it's really nice because you, I just wander out on my break. There's a little concrete pad that protects an overflow. And I just sit on there and I have a vape for a quarter of an hour. And there's geese, there's swans, there's a heron. The herons. I'm Get just, a lot of them around here. I'm just sat there and it's just like one's one staring at me from the other side of the pond. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> and he just looks over to me and goes, oh, and just takes off. Grey heron? What? Grey heron? Greyish white, yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of them out there. Because of the, the canal and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, the, the forests and whatever else. There's there's loads. You get loads around here. Um, I had one the other week as I was flying. I was recording it and I actually stopped recording. I actually stopped flying, let the quadcopter yeah. hang and just went, oh look, a grey heron. Yeah. Well, back to the flight. And just carried on. <laughs> um, <laughs> why not? But yeah, we're going to sort you out a quadcopter. We'll get you up in the air. It's a it's a great hobby, mate. I think you really enjoy it. It's an expensive goddamn hobby, but you know what? You really enjoy it. Yeah. You really will. It's it's one of those things. Um, when, when was it? Back in January, when DJI talked about the, those um, hundred quid quads. Hello. Is that it? That one. Oh, beast. Because I know I was going to come up. And we were going to pick one up, and I didn't even realise it had launched. That's beautiful. It's come up against a lot of different reviews. I, personally, I, I love it. I really do, because yeah. it did exactly what, what it said it was going to do on the tin. A lot of other people didn't like it, yeah. for whatever reason, either because they don't like smartphone controls or whatever. But you can use them with Bluetooth transmit with Bluetooth, yeah. uh, wire, Bluetooth controllers. Um, I think it's great. I think it's yeah. really good. In fact, what we'll do is I will charge this up now and after the recording we can uh, take it for a spin. Sweet. 
Um, it is, yeah, it's a great little, great little thing. Let's just give that a bit of a, a bit of juice. Oh my god! There we are. Perfect. Yeah, it's a, it's a great hobby. It'll, it'll keep you going for, for ages. You know, I mean, because with me, I've got into the racing ones. Yeah. As of about, well, I flew a couple of racing ones last year. Yeah. They didn't really do a lot for me last year. I don't know if the technology has come on leaps and bounds. Probably. Um, but uh, yeah, I got a couple of small racing ones. Yeah. And then I got the big racing one, and I got yeah. a couple of other racing ones behind there as well. Yeah. But yeah, I find I find it I find it brilliant. So relaxing, so nice. The thought of going out at five o'clock in the morning is absolutely nightmarish. Yeah. But when I'm up that, there, that's yeah, it's fine. It, it's its own reward. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Sorry, I keep on thinking my arm is vibrating, but it's not. not. But it just I keep on feeling it, it vibrating. Maybe yeah. it needs battery or something. But yeah, I think. Are you still nerfing? Yeah. Yeah. How's that going? Um, it's, it's uh, um, I haven't I, I haven't done anything with it in so long. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to be going to for a, a, a big war in uh, up, up this way uh, last year, last August. Yeah. Um, but I never got to the last of modified in time. Um, and then I got my leave cancelled because there was an oversight in the office. As which I said I couldn't go anyway, um, but yeah, um, it's it, I, I I still sort of pick them up and shoot a dart every now and again. Um, I sent off my blaster that I was working on to be finished um, at the end of August. Um, I was still waiting for to have it back. Wow. The blaster has been finished since um, late September, but because I requested custom stuff. That's taking forever, so wow. I might I might just poke the guy and say that you know I know we requested custom stuff. But Half a year has gone past, you know, and the rest. Yeah, it's just it's crazy. Um, did, so did you ever get into airsoft? In? You didn't. I liked airsoft. then. that was good fun. A guy I met on 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 YouTube a couple of weeks ago had an airsoft in channel. Yeah, and uh, for some reason YouTube pulled it. Yeah. Why? I don't know, but it's been happening across a lot of other things as well. Gun related? Not necessarily. Or gun shape, or you know. No, well, no, because there's a load of there's going to be um, Americans out there with gun channels because it seems like it's the American pastime. Yeah. Apologies for any Americans watching, by the way. That was horribly um, something. It was horribly um, horrible. It was, it was, it was grotesque. Run. You grotesque human being. Carry on. Yeah, um, but it's it's something I, I picked up on. Um, you know, I vape. Yeah. And I watch um, YouTube vapers to sort of pick up on new stuff that's coming out that maybe of of interest or intrigue. Yeah. Um, and one of them uh, basically said, "Yeah, um, YouTube are pulling channels for no reason." Um, or rather, YouTube channels, YouTube channels are getting pulled. The best reason we can think of is that they've received strikes. Oh, okay. So there was one guy um, who was a who had a, a four twenty based YouTube channel. Yeah. Shall we say? Yeah. Right. right. Um, and he received three strikes with a very close succession, and they deleted the channel. Wow. One hundred twenty thousand subs. Deleted the channel straight off. Good God. Not me no messing about Dan yeah. Contra. Um, and there have been other people in that sort of vein who have been who have YouTube channels and they've been getting strikes and they've been getting pulled. Um, and this guy was vaping with Twisted 420. Right, okay. And so he changed his name to vaping with Twisted 419. Yeah. <laughs> As you would. Just to distance yourself. Yeah. Ever so slightly. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Very slightly. Yeah, um, but it's a case of everyone's and there's people. Um, there's a couple of big name um, YouTube papers who've been getting strikes. Wow. For no apparent reason. Um, and so now everyone's talking about okay backups. What are we gonna do? This stuff is all being put up on YouTube, but we need to start thinking about alternative options. What's out there? So a load of people are now moving over to Vimeo, 
but mm. uploading everything there as a secondary, as a, as, as a backup option. But that's more professional. I couldn't get away uploading what I do on Vimeo. Well, this is it. These guys are very professional. Oh, there we are. That's, that's totally different then. Yeah. This is it. These, they, they, these are people who, who YouTube for a living. Yeah. That's, it's a, it is very yeah. much a, a, a different sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But they've got a camera crew, they've got professional editors, everything looks... Everything looks better, even if it's just sort of like a one-man band. Yeah. But, um, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of people are very much now in the, in, in the case of, right, okay, YouTube's going to put, start pulling vape channels anytime now. What do we do? We still, this is, this is our sort of our bread and butter. Um, there was an American vaping guy I used to watch. I can't for the life of me remember what the hell he what, what the hell his, his channel was called. I got him in, in my link of subscriptions. It was very good though. I hope he hasn't been pulled. He used to go through the different juices and yeah. talk about the different juices, talk about the different mods, different batteries, batteries to yeah, get, yeah. batteries to stay away from, makes to stay away from, etc. etc. Um, he used to try Sounds a lot of different very things. Grim green. Had a huge beard. Grim green. That's huge beard. But um, yeah, I, I liked him a lot because I used to sit during the night with my e-pipe. Yeah. And yes, yes. 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 I agree with you. Yes. 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 Educated fellow. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I like um, to sit on a Friday night with my digestive biscuits, a cup of tea, and my e-pipe. stuff that I was looking at that I liked for, for particular reasons and he goes do you like it for this how about this and it's all of this other stuff that he explained about it just like, is, his, is his channel being pulled no 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 I, not, not that I know of um, but he is trying to sue the FDA <laughs> okay so I don't think he's got a great deal of luck on his side yeah yeah because mm. it's, it's a shame I can understand yeah this this is I, this is a weird subject, isn't it? Because I had a lot of people contacting me and saying, you don't know how lucky you are, you're over a thousand subscriptions yeah, back yeah. six months ago when they culled, yeah. you know. But yeah, okay, one of my channels is under is over a thousand, the other one yeah. isn't. Yeah. This one isn't, Yeah. you know. Um, but my answer to everybody else was, if it's your love, yeah, you'll just keep you on just doing keep it. Plugging. If you don't like it, then you wash your hands of it, you walk away and that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh well, for the experiment. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I think myself, I couldn't imagine not doing, not sitting down having a chat, not doing this. Yeah. But then I can understand people who maybe have sponsors, who maybe if they're lucky enough to have sponsors under a thousand subs. Yeah. Who then maybe have lost, you know, lost interest or whatever else. Yeah. I don't know. It's a weird one, this, because yeah. I've also heard Joe Rogan when I watch his podcast, yeah. his, his video cast. And I, I, I watched that, and they were talking about YouTube a little while ago, and they were saying that they've had strikes and everything else, and you could, there are certain words you can't say. Yes. Otherwise, you know, obviously the, the algorithms will pick it up and just strike you, you know, and, and stuff you like that. Is, that and, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've had a few videos on my other channel which have come back and uh, which have been demonetized, and I've had to go through and manually request review, and then seven days later they've been requested, has been accepted, but I've lost revenue for those well, seven, days. seven days. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, and stuff like that, which doesn't seem like a lot to a lot of people, but when that revenue helps me to buy these things that I'm testing, yeah, that's it, it, that's it a makes a hell of a difference, yeah. you know, um, especially when the video has ramped up six, seven, eight thousand views in a couple of days, yeah, and I'm missing out on you know something exactly. like that. Um, that, that can be a big, uh, a big hit to the wallet. Because I was, you know, I, I'm all for them making the if, if they want to make the the, the the if they want to make YouTube a lot more professional, then you know I'm all for that. But at the end of the day, I always thought that YouTube was a very, you know, was amateur. Was anyone yes. can pick up a camera and go, "Hi, I'm so and so," or yeah. "What do you think of this? Let's do yeah. whatever." Do you know what I mean? That's why I always yeah. thought, "Oh, should uh, we play like this idiot?" Yeah, exactly. Should we play a video game? Then let you know. Let's have a live stream, sort of thing. Yeah, you know. It's that's all, why I always it's thought always it was. been. It's always felt very inclusive. Yes, and uh, you could be whoever you wanted that's to the be. Word, inclusive. Yes, you could be whoever you wanted to be. You could 
do whatever you wanted to do within reason, as long as it wasn't hurting anyone or yeah, it wasn't yeah, illegal, yeah. you were golden. Yeah. And now it seems like they're, I don't want to say growing a conscience because there's nothing conscionable about the channels they're pulling. Do you think it's to do with the larger YouTubers that may have been, act, been acting up? Yeah, um, it's I, had like sort of like a waterfall effect. Yeah, I think I think I definitely think. Um, oh God, what's his name? Um, PewDiePie definitely started okay. that off. Yeah. Um, and then that idiot who found a dead body in the forest and filmed it. Uh, oh, in Japan. Um, yeah. There, but he was he was. Um, Logan, was it Logan? Yeah. Logan. Paul Logan. Oh uh, yeah. Paul Logan or Logan, Logan Paul when he discovered that. Yeah. Body in the forest. That, Everything seemed to change around by that time. This is it. That, that that may not have been the ignition point, but that definitely fanned the flame. Yeah. And then it was just like, right, these people are taking it too far. Yeah. It's gone beyond the original mission statement for YouTube. We need to start taking control of our house before it gets out of hand. Yeah. And then everything from there has just flipped and it's just been a case of Okay, you're being an idiot. Your your all your uh, all your videos are being demonetized. But because of you, we're now gonna have, we're gonna make an example of you. But because of you, we're also gonna do this to to the whole, to the wider community. But we're gonna make more demands of them to make them um, more professional. I suppose as going back to what you said, just sort of trying to make people more conscious about the stuff they're putting out, especially big namers, yeah. so they can't just roll it off as a gag. They can't just say, oh, I was just trying to be funny, I meant no, I no offence. You know, some of the stuff that PewDiePie's come out with, and again, love I Paul. personally don't know. I, I, <coughs> I've, 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 that's all I've seen is... PewDiePie in trouble again, rah, rah, I never... Oh yeah, I saw that with Disney, wasn't it? Was that last yeah, year? Yeah, 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 multi-million dollar contract with Disney that got pulled, like, the second, um, he, whatever, the, the, the original reason that they, yeah, that, you know, yeah. Um, I think it was, um, either very racist or anti-Semitic content, um, was said in a video by PewDiePie and that sort of triggered anti-Semitism from Disney or anti-Semitism no, towards Disney or? from him in general oh right so and, and, and Disney then Disney distanced Disney basically themselves. then said yeah fuck that nice. right okay bang done yeah. okay all time sorry separated. I thought you meant he was doing that no no I was no, like no. whoa hang on what the hell no <laughs> no no that's, that was him in general okay as, as this Disney thing was in the works yeah and then they saw that and they were just yeah yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think when when they get to sort of that sort of size, do you think it, it it's right to sort of say that they just sort of like stop caring about? I don't. I don't think it's as much as they stop caring as they're so used to yes men. Oh, uh, okay. They're used to having people say, "Right, you're famous," so we'll say yes to you to shut you up, to make sure you're happy. Yeah. Um, and uh, but the trouble with yes men is that you will always get a yes, and you will always get to the point where you're just like, have I gone too far? No, 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 it's brilliant, brilliant, loved it. And then so you 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 don't have that filter where someone where you go to someone, oh, go, was that a bit much? And they go, yeah, get rid of that now. Mm. You know, they don't have that filter. They they lose it over time, yeah. and then that sort of, and then. Maybe I, like should, maybe I should reread or actually read properly some of YouTube's T's and C's. I've never had a strike, so I've never, you know, yeah. everything has always been, you know, yeah. fine like that. Because I've always, I've never, it's a bit different with this when you're sitting down having a chat, but I've always yeah. tried to, in the other channel, try to be family friendly. Yeah. Because absolutely. as soon as I saw on my, on my analytics on my mobile that people were watching in like the 10 to 15 category, yeah. I was like, right, now this is different now. This is it. The, the, you know, the parameters have changed. Yeah. So I, in the in the other channel, I don't swear. Yeah. You know, I try and have a little bit of comedy, a little bit of lightheartedness. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's something I've kept that I will keep up. Yeah. You know, and this is different. I prefer to sort of let loose a little bit with this channel this and sort of just you know be a bit more relaxed. Yeah. This is this is 
there'll be a disclaimer at the start of this to say they're swearing, same as there was in the last one when yeah. I sat down with Doug. Yeah. You know. This is this is um this is professional John, this is shop front John. This is what you get when you uh, <laughs> this is what you expect from this channel. Yeah. And then you've got this channel and it's a case of this is playing the scenes, this is who I am behind the camera. If you're not okay with that, that's fine. Mm. You don't have to watch it. Mm. Carry on. Mm. Yeah, I think, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see where YouTube goes. It's definitely one to watch. Yeah, because it was, every, a lot of people that I knew at the time jumped on the YouTube bandwagon years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I was like, nope, it'll never come to anything, you're being stupid, and then it all blew up, and I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I'm happy doing this, you know, at, at, the, at the stage where I am, because yeah. you... It's, uh, it's very difficult, but I think it's that that's driving me. Yeah. If I went from having X amount of subs to this amount of subs, from making X amount of money to making this amount of money quickly, yeah. I think I would get bored. Knowing me, I would, because it was yeah. just there on a silver plate. Exactly. But because that's, I've got a slog it, I've you, got right? to, exactly, yeah. Because I've got to work at it, and because I've got to get up, you know, I sometimes sleep three hours a night, and then get up and then plan my videos and get everything done. Yeah. It's it's making me sort of push myself harder. It's a source of pride. That's a much easier way to say it. <laughs> it's a much easier way to say it. Yeah, you're right. You it's, are right. It, yeah. it's, a, it, it's something that you know you've got to put the effort in. And I mean, I know we've spoken to her about it many times. If there's something mm. you're not happy with, mm. you'll just scrap it. Mm. Same as me. I had we were talking about this earlier. Blogs that we've that recorded, edited, fine, grand job, sitting there ready to go. No, I'm not. That's never seen the light of day because I'm not happy with it. It's That's the past 16 I've done for this channel. Yeah. Have all been the same for that since coming back from Rome. God damn you, Rome! Um, yeah, advice to anyone. If you're going to vlog and go on holiday in a country which is 90% grey, yeah, don't vlog and in that country and come back to a country which is 90% grey. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I, in, as I said to you earlier, and I, I should have recorded this, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but as I said to you earlier, when I was out in Rome, the idea was to get an idea of Rome life, yeah. to fit it into the vlog, to see where it sort of sat. Yeah. Uh, and then when I was out in Rome, around all the sculptures, around all the, yeah. the, the history, around the sun, it was just incredible. Yeah. Um, and then I came back to the UK and I set my camera up and I was just about to talk and... The, the sky behind me was grey, everything was grey, even the grass was grey, and I was just like, oh, what? So yeah. I recorded it, and I watched it back, and it was just, there was no fire, there was no enthusiasm, so I thought, right, fine, I'll put that out. So in JD Quad and JD Quad Vlogs, uh, there's always an archive folder, and inside yeah. there I have things that have never gone live, yeah. just in case I'm ever ill, then I can yeah. pull stuff out of that, schedule it, yeah. you know, crack on. Exactly. And I've done 16 extra videos. I did 14 as of a few weeks ago. I've done a few more, which I'm still not happy with. This is why I've gone more to this sort of environment for now. Yeah. Because it works for me for now. Yeah. You know. Um, so, to quote the um, frankly wonderful um, Monty Python, what have the Romans ever done for us? We were on a vlogging channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we are. The Rome is such a beautiful country. Yeah. The temperature was amazing, everything, the colours, yeah. you know, were just incredible. Everything was amazing. And it wasn't as if I was using a different camera out there to hear. Yeah. Same camera, yeah. same microphone. But when I came back to here and I started recording, I was like, oh my god, this just doesn't look right. Yeah. It doesn't feel right. Yeah. And I edited it and it just didn't look right. And I was just, I stopped it uploading. I was like, cancel upload. No yeah. click on the cross. There we are. Cancel that, delete that. Yeah. Not happy with it. And then I thought every week I did another vlog, or every yeah. like fortnight I'd do another vlog. And then before I knew it, I looked at the back of the channel and I answered a couple of questions that I'd had there for a few months. Yeah. And I was just like, I haven't done anything since September or since August. Yeah. I was like, right, I've got to alter that. I've got to at least put out a few things. Yeah. You know, because eventually these chats are going to be going live. It's yeah. going to be a live thing. I hit the button, bang, everybody can jump in jump and in, can, ask you know, questions. Exactly, and just, that go, would be really just go crazy. But I'm not, as you can see, I'm not set up yeah. for it yet. No, no, no. I've had time to get set up for it. I just haven't done it because I massively, we're going to run out of SD card space. Right, tell you what, how long we got there? Yeah, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop this and then we're going to reconvene in a couple of minutes.
So to go back to what we were talking about originally, which was the YouTube saga. Yeah. If you get your channel pulled, yeah. can you then go back and ask them to reinstate it? As far as I know, yes. But you would have to have... One would assume you'd have to answer a lot of questions about... A, about what, why the content was struck. So why did you feel it necessary to put that content out? You know, this, this, if it's in flagrant breach of the T's and C's, then mm. yeah, fair enough. If they got auto-struck for some reason, and they got a lot within quick succession, then and they haven't had time to appeal it, or there's not there's not be, there's been so little time between all these strikes hitting, yeah, um, and then the algorithm automatically pulling their channel, um, and then and there's there's not enough time for them to appeal all the strikes to get them below a certain strike count, I would assume they would have a backup of all the data so they could then reinstate everything, reinstate all the subs, re-upload all the files. I'd assume that would work, but knowing Google and YouTube, they, I, I, I know there are people out there who've had channels pulled and they've said, no, everything's gone, that's it. We're drawing a line under this issue. Well, you are more than welcome to set up a second channel. You are more than welcome to start re-uploading content. You are more than welcome to try and get your subscriber base back. Crack on. It's, it's a it's a free country style of attitude. Yeah, see, this is why I, it's been, it's for that reason I've got every single video I've ever done. Yeah, this is it. I mean, you know, it's like it, it, it is the paranoid elf in my head that's just like. When I was, you know, because I've got, I think it's just for JD Quad. Yeah. I think I'm bordering on about six terabytes of video, seven terabytes of video. It's got to be a bit more than that. Because it's the NAS drive that just bind you on the floor. Yeah. That's that's one of them. And I've got, I've, all, all, I've got to sync it to the cloud as well. Yeah. Um, which is costing me an arm and a leg. So I'm going to just have to buy another NAS, I think. Yeah. And bring it all in-house. Um, it's Okay, say 10 tera, 10 terabytes. Yeah. Roughly ten terabytes, roughly. Well, this is it. I mean, yeah, it'd be about that. But yeah, and that's it. And it's because of the fact that because you, you know, I try and I read bits of the T's and C's. I read the bits that may concern me to do with competitions yeah. and things like that. And I yeah, always yeah, yeah. try and keep things as level as possible. Mm, There's no sort of ambiguity. Does he mean this? No. What I say. What I say is what. Is I mean. what I mean. It's not yeah. sort of. I don't try and you know snake my way through things it's yeah. just kind of I, I try and be as upfront as I Absolutely. as I know how but then at least if it does get pulled I've got all the stuff where I could just mass upload yeah just set know, it all set it all one one sweep everything's back 400 odd videos boom there we are have fun with that you too happy days you know yeah. I just upload it all and just yeah. way to go yeah exactly it's the, the, the descriptions and the tags I don't have but I might have to do a tag sweep yeah. And just get everything else, possibly. I don't know. But yeah, it, I mean, it, it is something that concerned me for about the first six months of my channel. This is I was it, thinking, I mean, what if I get pulled? What if this happens? What if, you know, and just after a while, you just you just yeah. forget about it and you just carry you on. You do what you do, and I, yeah. I mean, I, it, it doesn't bother me so much. I mean, I, you know, when I restarted vlogging and all the rest of it, and then shit got on top of me, um, I, I've deleted all those videos just because I can't bear to look at them. Yeah, really? Yeah. From YouTube? No, it's, oh, not, it's not on YouTube. I just got rid, got rid of the projects, got rid of the files, got rid of everything associated with them. Yeah. Just because it was at that point in time where I couldn't deal with anything. Yeah. I, it was literally a case of I would come home, I would say hello to my parents, I would eat my food, I would go upstairs and go into my bedroom, chuck the DVD over my head and stay there until I had to get up to work, use all my spoons in work and then come home and just go back upstairs where I knew I could be safe and I could sort of implode. Is that depression then? Never been diagnosed but yes. Mm. Basically. It's, it, I mean fuck as long as I've known you. Mm. Basically since mid, mid to late teens um, bullied at school all that nonsense um, which didn't help but then it was a case of it just got to the point where it was getting worse and worse and worse and 
never tried to get help for it because I dealt with it on my own. I found ways to deal with it, I found outlets, I found coping mechanisms, um, and it's just, yeah, it's just been part of my life. It's something I've dealt with and moved on, and I don't make an awful lot of noise about it because I know there's so many people out there that's worse off than me. Mm. Um, and I still, the, 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 on this day, there are people who will say, having such a shit day, and no matter how bad a day I'm having, I'll turn around and say, right, come on, just go have a chat. And I, we'll go outside, talk, do whatever, go down the pub, whatever. They'll tell me what's going on. I'll sit down and listen. I'll do the best I can for them. And then I'll go home and I'll sort of process it in my own time in my own way. Yeah. And then I sort of use what's been said there to try and sort of put some focus on how I'm feeling at that point in time and sort of try and improve my headspace and just use it that way. Whatever works, isn't it? This Whatever is it. works for you. Uh, it's just, Sometimes yeah. it's the small things that help though and maybe just this jumping in a car and driving around. Yeah. Is, you know... I, is, do you remember when we went to Fanethi? And I was agonising about coming out to my parents. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Me that's a went. long time ago. That's a long time mm. ago. That is a very that, long time ago. That's when I like. Mm. And... Yeah, that was 11, year, 11 12, 12 years ago. At least. Yeah. And we went down to Nathalie Beach. Wow. We had chips. Yeah, I remember that. I cried my eyes out. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then I went home, and about maybe four years later, I finally came out to her. Mm. And she was, you know how we feel on this subject? Mm. We will not speak of this again. Done. And it's only come up in conversation once since. And it's been nothing, no reaction, nothing. They still don't, they still don't accept it. They, they, they are still very much of the opinion that anything other than heteronormative is wrong and that's because of the whole church religion shtick but there's still very much a, a case of well he's still our son we just won't talk about that such that topic so we don't have to think about it we can just focus, focus on the fact that he's our son that bit doesn't matter that's him that's his choice that's his world that's what he deals with we just deal with the fact that he's our son and we want to help him and run her up. Yeah. Grandfather was less than supportive. Mm -hmm. I think it sort of, it, it, not not every case, but I think it sort of, some generations maybe find it harder than others. Yeah. It, especially if there's some form of religious upbringing involved. Because mm. for generations my family have been Christadelphian. Mm -hmm. Both sides. Mm. And it's gotten to that point now where you know, the Batswoods and the Palmers are, are fairly well known in the South Wales community. Um, and it was a case of when I got baptised, um, it was a case of, right, so well, Joe's carrying on. I was the sixth generation Batsford to be baptised in Abernethy. Right, okay. You know, this this was a big thing. It was a it big was, deal. Yeah. It was a big thing, and then about maybe three, four years later, I said, "Yep, yeah, fuck this, I'm done." Yeah. See, no, I've always had a problem with religion. Yeah. I've had a problem with a lot of things, but religion but yeah, is always something particular. that has always stuck in my craw. Yeah. Always made me, you know, I can understand. I, I I I think from my point of view, I've always looked. I've always been. I've always had a scientific background. Yeah, I've always so that's kind of where I I've always I've always gone. You, you, yeah. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. But that, that's my path. That, that is, that's that's the way you've been. Yeah. you've come to it. And now I know my mum goes to church. Yeah, and I used to when I was younger, and then when I didn't want to anymore, I just said I don't want to go, and she said that's fine. Yeah. But the thing is with mum, this is the other flip of the coin. Yeah. Is that doesn't matter what I've done. Yeah. She's always been supportive and she's never thrown the church thing at me. She, Ever. Oh, she, if you I were to ask her, times. if you were to ask her, she would say that she goes to church. Yeah. But she, other than that, you would never know. No. Uh, you know, and the things that, 
And, and, and I think this is what I've got the biggest respect for when it comes to mum, is the fact that she doesn't see. Yeah. Because honestly, I don't want to hear it. If you are, if you do go, that's fine. It, not a problem, but I don't want to hear it. No, exactly. My favouritest thing in the world when it comes to religion is a meme of Maggie Smith. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, it's perfectly fine. It, it's, it's fine to have a religion. It's, it's even fine to be proud of it. It's when you start taking it down and waving it to the, in, other, in other people's faces that I have a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that, yeah, that just spoke volumes to me. Yeah. One of my parents are the same. If I still said yes when we go to church and then they try to explain their viewpoints and all the rest of it, they won't actively go out of their way mm. to do it. But they will then use that at me. So if, if we're having a discussion about something, um, mum, and, mum will occasionally pop up with, um, it's all in his plan and all this yeah. stuff. And I'm just like, you know I think that's nonsense. And oh, saying grace before every meal, it drives me up the wall. It makes me want to strangle them. Mm. But I don't say anything because I know that's their thing. Yeah, and I am I am under their roof, so therefore yeah. I have to abide by their rules. Yeah. Their rules is they say grace before every meal. Yeah. And I just sit there and fume. <laughs> yeah. Just just like, can I eat my food now? <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, I think it, it is different if you if you do live there, isn't it? You know, because yeah. you are, as you say, you do have to abide by their rules to a certain extent. But at the same time you are your own individual person as well. This is it. You I know? Mean, and it's like I, I I've never, I've never told anybody, you know, I don't tell people my, my views. Yeah. I keep my views to myself for everything, for politics, for yeah, religion, yeah, for, you know, because that person that you're talking to has been through X, Y, Z during the day. Yeah. They don't want to hear your shit. No. Simple. Yeah. They don't want to hear your shit. They've got enough shit. They're just going to carry on with it. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I think that that's totally fair enough. I think where I get annoyed yeah. and when I start to get really, really annoyed is where people just don't stop. Yeah. And when you say, look, hey, dude, that's your that's thing. Fine. Crap that's fine. Crap on. That's not the way I think. Can you please, like, you know, just, yeah. you know, keep it to yourself. Yeah. And when he's, and when they carry on and they say, well, why don't you think that way? Then you should think this way. You know, and, I, and I'm just like, no, please. Yeah, I've not, asked you nicely. Yeah. No, not you sure. know, be, or you're, sure. and then they jump to conclusions. You're an atheist. Well, actually, no, I'm not. Yeah. You know, surprise, surprise. Yeah. You know, but it's just not my bag. Yeah. It's not so, my thing. Organised religion, religion is not something that you want to be drawn on. It's a case yeah. of ev ev everyone has their own faith, their, their own belief structure. I, I've been dragged up. In YouTube terms, you don't subscribe to it. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I love it. Yes. It, it, but yeah, I mean being brought up with it, it's been a case of yes this is important yes this is special blah de, blah de, blah and as I've grown up I'm just like and what drugs were they on when they wrote this can I have some <laughs> when I when I stopped going to church I had a load of questions and I asked a load of questions and a load of questions couldn't be answered yeah so I was just like right fine when you find the answer I'll be back yeah and, and that, that was pretty much it. I just remember thinking to myself, I, I, how can you preach this thing yeah. when you don't fully have, have, have a, you know, if, if, I get asked an, if I get asked a question in work, yeah. I have to have an answer. Yeah. I can't turn around and say, don't know, yeah. because that's not my job. My job yeah. is to know. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I can't turn around and say that. So your job is to know as well. Yeah. This is just, you know, as I say, this is just my my thinking, your, your take on it. My yeah. take on it totally, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I know what your know, church for mum has been fantastic. I made yeah. a load of great friends in church. Yeah. You know, people that I still I still talk to on Facebook. Yeah. And they are genuinely awesome people. Yeah. You know, but for that's myself, it. it's just not something that I I want to. No. I want to do. I'm just have as little to do with it as possible. Exactly. I'm happy taking on. I got you know got myself a family. I'm yeah. happily do, doing what I'm doing, you know, and, and, and that's it, really. Yeah. That's exactly where it goes, you know. Well, this is it. I work, I come home, I make videos, I talk to people. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 
you know, and I'm, I'm happy with that. But, you know, again, I've met people that I've known for years, had no idea. And I kept on thinking to myself, why aren't you able to do something on Sunday? Every time I wanted to go out for a drink, I'd say midday or like, you know, three o'clock yeah. in the afternoon on Sunday, they're like, oh, we can't do Sunday. And I never, ever clocked. Yeah, and like six years two later, two exactly, six years later, oh, we can't because we, we, we go to church. I'm like, hey, sorry for sorry for asking, you know. Yeah. You know, oh. I, I I I respect that, and I won't ask you again, sort of thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, it's just it's crazy. Yeah. The the one that crashed me was, was um, went to get my hair cut a year or two ago. Has your um, hair only grown that long in a year? I know, right? Are you serious? All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, no, um. I got cut this morning, but um, <laughs> no, um, about a year back, because um, even when I moved to Manselton, I would still use the same guy. Yeah. Um, and about a year back, he he, he was just like I was talking about um, dad going to church and radara. Your your parents go to church. I was like, yeah. You mean he hasn't been spouting his bullshit at you? No. Oh, I never knew. Hmm. I was just like, is this a recent thing? I said, mm. since I was born, since before I was born, mate. Since he was, a, since he was, the age I came, I first came in to see you when I was a, you know, since he was a baby. I uh, fucking never know. <laughs> I would never have known. I've talked to him about shagging the wife. I've talked to him about my cock and blah blah blah. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to apologise to him now, will I? <laughs> I was just like, don't. Just, just don't. <laughs> that he does, it doesn't bother him. You are you. Yeah. You do you. Yeah. You, you are the way you are for a reason. Yeah. He respects that. He still comes here because we like you for who you are. You are, a, um, you know, we, we come to you for a reason. Um, yeah. We, we, we've, we've known each other, well, I've known you since I was three, so I've known you for th over 30 years. Yeah. I will always come, as long as I'm living in within driving distance, I will always come back here. Yeah. Just because of who you are and the way you and the way you are with me. And it's the same with that. The second you use additional knowledge to change who you are, he's going to know something's, something's up. So carry on as you are. Leave it be. It was all right and my fucking grand job. Well gone. But he just every so often he will just say, I still can't believe your father goes to church. And I was just like <laughs> It is what it is, boy. Yeah, that's it. But again, fair play for you know, for him not saying anything or anything like that. But that's it. Again, it's each their own, isn't it? Absolute bygones be bygones, that's the rule yeah. I, I've always I've always lived by. Even if you don't agree with it, doesn't mean it's wrong. No, it's you know, just a different point Within reason. I'm going to add within reason to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. As but, long as you're not hurting anything, anybody and you're not doing anything illegal, crack yeah. on. It's your life. You live it the way you see fit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. That sounds like a good spot for us to end on. <laughs> Actually, that really does. Right, cheers, Joe. No worries, man. Um, we'll get together again very soon, probably.